How about bloomnation.com? You know what that is? Started back in 2011. This site has exploded some big partnerships, which we'll talk about. This is, guys, what I'm going to do is generally we have two co-owners in. I want to have some fun with you guys, okay? I want you to introduce each other as if you're walking in front of a gigantic audience. You know, at the Greek theater or whatever you're at, okay? Huge audience, you walk out in the middle of the stage, you tap the microphone, and you go, I want to introduce my partner. And I want you to get the audience really excited, okay? Don't use stuff like, oh, he's a great dancer, he smells good in the morning, nothing like that. I want you to get into it, okay? So you're going to introduce your partner, you're going to embellish your partner, okay? And maybe something strange about them. Who wants to go first? I'll nominate my partner, Fabo Charaka. <laughs> so who's going first? I'll go first. Go for it. <clears throat> I want to introduce my best friend, one of the most charismatic, charming, best poker players I know, the guy that'll take your money before you know it, Mr. David Danishkar. Wow, I like that. That's pretty good. Introduce your partner. Hey, let me hit the mic. Your time. I want to introduce you, <clears throat> excuse me, to my best friend and my co-founder, Fabio Charaka, who founded Bloom Nation, who has more dirt on me than anyone else in this world. And if I'm not nice to him, could, could ruin my life, but instead made my life better by bringing me on board. Mr. Charaka, how are you today? Wow. I like a mister. <laughs> you like that. And your partners, right? You're proper about that, yeah. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Wow. There's some, uh, I guess, captain. <clears throat> captain? Yeah. Right? I call him the captain. First mate? Yeah. First mate? We call him the captain. Do you really... You call him the captain? Well, the, we we have to. He has a big picture of himself, a uh, portrait in the. No, in the I don't. I actually don't believe that. <laughs> no. I, I see you as somebody that wants to make sure everyone feels like they're part of a team. Absolutely, yeah. It's a big, it's a big, big focus for me. Is that we're all partners. Even even uh, people that join our company, uh, and they, they we run into people. I say this is my partner. I don't say this is someone who works for me or our employee. I, we're all partners. And where's the business gone now since you guys started uh, four, five years, four years ago? Where are you at right now? So now we have uh, over three thousand flower shops that we work with. We've That's huge. built a huge community. I mean, the amount of uh, quality florists that have joined our platform—it's really changed the way people are discovering florists. It's really tremendous. And explain the process. Help somebody would use Bloom Nation. Yeah, so we're kind of competing in this space against companies like FTD and Teleflora. You mean old school old, stuff, old right? Old school stuff, way phones, in the past. right? I mean, a li landline. No, they have phone books that they use. Phone books. The florists <laughs> used to throw at them when they come back to the shop. And in all seriousness, I mean, they're an old school technology and the way that was created is that you would buy what you saw was a photo for hundred hours of flowers that anyone in the country could theoretically make. And what ended up happening is after all the brokerage fees and all the middlemen, uh, most of the floors would reject them because they get less than 50%, uh, less than 50 cents on the dollar where they weren't profitable. So a florist would take them and give, you know, old flowers or flowers. The photos you'd see were one-sided, so it looked beautiful, and then you'd actually see the reality. It would look nothing like what you purchased. You wouldn't even know the florist, and the florist doesn't know who you, the customer, are. So what incentive do they have to actually deliver on that promise? None, because the only person you're going to complain to is 1-800-Flowers. Right. Makes sense. And conversely, if they do amazing, the only person you're going to go to is 1-800-Flowers. So that whole model was essentially like a, 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 a drop shipping model. And so Bloom Nation, uh, we created a way in which florists could, first of all, put the products that they wanted, the designs they want, the vases they want, what represented them, with their name tied to it, right? And that's transparency. That's actually the, the model of, I see the artist, I see the reviews, and now their name is on the line. It's a real relationship, one-to-one -one almost. It's a real relationship, and if they don't deliver, you could blast them, right? You could go on Yelp, you could go on other means, you come on Bloom Nation, and you could leave. And so that whole internet... Uh, where where the florists are now adopting to, they see that things move faster, they do well, and so they love the technology that brings in this business. It, it's really an accountability process, is what you're saying. Yeah. You know, as much as I go into Uber, <laughs> if I don't like a driver, and all of a sudden I start seeing drivers that have one or two stars, I certainly don't want to have that driver. You're doing the same thing with florists. Yeah, and we even the uh, florists will even now snap a picture of it to you, the sender. So you know, yeah. I love that accountability. Exactly. And mm -hmm. you're saying now over three thousand. Yep. 3,000 florists, and there is an incentive for a florist to be part of your network because that relationship is, one, it's more profitable for them, yep. right? Absolutely. And if anything, they're going to have probably more business more often. Well, I think the big thing is uh, while these other services just 
feed orders to these florists. They're transactional one-off orders. We build, we allow them to build relationships with customers and build lifetime, those lifetime relationships. So it's about earning the business of the customer and making them order from them over and over and over again, rather than just feeding them one-off orders. Now, I, I realize that you have a very special type business with florists. But the concept is very similar to other businesses, right? And that is you become the platform between whatever that service is and the customer. You're the, the PayPal, I mean, you're the eBay in between, theoretically, right? It's just no one was really catering to the florist industry. Yeah, we've seen, so recently we've seen even Airbnb, right? Connect there you go. People. Airbnb's a great so, example. So, so there are a lot of platforms. Uh, some of the florists that you'll see on our platform, so a lot of the brick and mortar side of small businesses is going out with the internet because high rent, high overhead insurance but a lot of the floors now that are prospering on blue nation a lot of them are brick and mortar a lot of them are are floors that have actually left to studios or places that have cheaper rent because they don't need walk-in uh traffic anymore. makes sense that's you know? fantastic so you're actually seeing in, th in theory more competition in your space because you're allowing it to breed now everyone can be participating in this industry well, it's like a share. I think it's like a shared economy, social commerce. It's allowing independent it. people to, to create entrepreneurships out of themselves and build their business through our platform. And what's your favorite flower? Mine? You look like a lily guy. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? Actually, I have, I have a soft side. I like peony is the best. Really? That's yours? Yes, I am. I have that emotional side to me. Personally, I like orchids because they last a really long time and they're really beautiful. So it's the kind of thing for, especially for a guy but who doesn't have time to What kind of orchid? There's a lot of orchids. So I'm a big Sibidium orchid. Wow. Fan. I'm going to throw that out there. That. there I would like to see a t-shirt with <laughs> a big Sibidium. You know your flowers, <laughs> huh? I, I like flowers, actually. Going deep nice. into the orchids. I like... There we go. Orchids are cool, yeah, right? Yeah, are cool. I like the different fragrant orchids, yeah. but that's a different show, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. <laughs> So you guys have been together from the very, very beginning, right? Fruit, very, very beginning, David? Um, yeah, since we started the company, we met, it's been about... For about, wait, real quick, who met, who started it? You did, right? Yeah, so originally I started the company in the early stages, and then I immediately reached out. Once I knew that this was something that could work, I reached out to David. Your poker-playing friend. Yeah, I mean, we went, to, we went to Berkeley together, so he was one of the sharpest math guys that I knew uh, at Berkeley. What were you doing? What were you doing before you got the phone call? I was playing poker. No. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you a hardcore poker guy? So I uh, so at, at Berkeley, I actually started to get into poker, <laughs> and I taught a, a class, kind of like the MIT team. Why but, would you want to then get into business? Because I mean, I, I I've watched yeah. you guys. You have a rock and roll lifestyle. I mean, it's it was and it still is something that I miss in a way. But it's uh, well, it's an, it's a journey that showed me one thing that I couldn't really work for anyone else. <laughs> Right. And then if I could be passionate about something. So um, Fab was actually one of the people post-Berkeley that encouraged me, basically told me, and it's funny, told me the same thing 10 years later, don't go get a job, you're, you're going to get fired, you're not going to last, go do what your heart uh, desires. And so I went and played poker, and in uh, 2006 I got up to being the number two player in the world, and in 2008 I won one of the World Series of Poker tournaments. I'm totally lost even more now. <laughs> you are literally like the... the the David Lee, you're the Bon Jovi of poker. Why would you want to walk away from that? I mean, I think he led a better life. But yeah. yeah, you think? <laughs> I think no, so. I don't think. I think no one really knows you. You can almost live an anonymous life, sure, yeah. right? You can wear you wear those glasses everywhere, the sunglasses, little baseball cap. Yeah, I, I had I had the hoodie and I had the earphones. Did you? Yeah, but um, but it was so I actually no, don't take this wrong, okay? And I'm, it's no. not intended to be that way because I know a lot of people that have really interesting lives and they feel I am so compelled to either work for this this vision of somebody mm -hmm. or be part of this 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 mission I admire that so to hear you go through this rock and roll lifestyle and say hey I want to be part of bloom nation uh, I a think that, flower company uh, I think that has to do with Fabo's ability to sell the dream in a way right so Fabo came to me and said his aunt's actually a local florist um, and said that these florists really want something else and it to me it sounded like a poker game with more money at stake. I know you want to talk about equity and and uh, exits later, but the, the poker table was now this platform and the opponents were the other companies. And the reality is that the stakes to win are 10 times bigger than anything you can win in the main event of the World Series of Poker, right? So when you think of it like that, it all becomes like another game, but a game in which there, there's reality and it's, and it's motivating and it's life-changing. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so do you know his tells? Uh, yeah, I think we know each other's really well. I, I, no, I want to make sure people understand what that is. What exactly is a tell? 
I mean, tells come in different ways, but a tell is, uh, well, psychologically and their physical tells as well. There's one classic physical tell, and a tell meaning something that you could see that would point to an indication or a conclusion that you can make. So in poker, an example would be that when I'd play, I'd see someone's pulse going really quickly, and I'd see, and they'd have a bluff. And then later, I'd see their pulse going really quick, and I'd see they have the best hand or the nuts. And then later in the tournament, their pulse wouldn't beat. So I'd realize that they're not polarizing or at one of the extremes. They had a middle hand, and I knew if I pushed all in, they couldn't call. So that was an example of a of a physical tell, but there's psychological tells either. But you're right. What's, it, what's your tell? So David notices subtle things in my face. If I'm like nervous or if I'm saying something that I'm not comfortable with, he can pick up on it right away. I think that's important as a partner yeah. to know that for support. Yeah. Can you read David's? Yeah. Dave, that, David, uh, he uh, adjusts his voice. He gets don't, a little no, no, quiet. No, you know, don't say anything. <laughs> he needs that. That's a secret weapon, man. It's, it's out there now. now. We know. Oh, it's out there that's now. like giving the no. bat cave location out. That's He's what you just did. I'm over. He'll, he'll I'm, it I can't yeah. go back to the tables. Yeah. Never again. No. Yes. Never again. No more World Series of Poker for me. Are you guys, besides being great friends, are you good business partners? Yeah, I think uh, we really complement each other. So I uh, I always joke around about this, but if David ran the company by himself, he'd have a hell of a party, but might burn all the money in a That's the short balance. amount of time. Yeah, and for me, I learn from him because sometimes I need to know when to take risks, like when to pull the trigger on things. I might take too long to do that. So having us uh, as counterbalances makes a, a really great business. And I should also throw in there's yeah. a third co-founder, Greg, who's our, our, our balance in the center. So I would actually, say, I almost say that Favo would maybe be the balance in the center. But Gre Greg uh, and myself, so Greg came from consulting bankruptcy restructuring. So literally wow. how to take something down to the cents. And I came from professional poker and Favo came from investment banking. But I think if you look at the three of us on Akil, we sometimes can have conversations about anything for hours. I can see that. But in the end of the day, we're there to balance each other and move the company forward in a really good check and balance. Bloom Nation's the company. I, when you started the business, you started by yourself, correct? Yeah, for a short amount of time, the company was... Uh, how did you decide then to bring in your friends, and how did you decide an equity structure? Uh, so I decided at the point when I realized that this could be a big idea. It wasn't just a small business that I could start on my own and build something. I really wanted help. And I and to me, I didn't call floral experts. I didn't call e-commerce experts. I called the two people I trusted the most and mm -hmm. had the closest relationship with was David and Greg. So to me, trust was paramount. I had Without to trust a doubt, them. I agree yeah. with that. But how did you decide? So other people are listening right now. How did you figure that out? In terms of the equity component? Yeah. did you do a third, third, third? Or, hey, I'm the founder, I should have something a little more because I started the process? I think we made it really simple. I don't think it was a long, dragged out a conversation. It was basically outside of the fact that I started earlier, it was supposed to be an equal split, but I took a premium because I, Which I started Which is respectable, and I think yeah. you guys would all expect that, yeah. right? And then how about legal paperwork? Did you go right to the, you both are smiling right away because everything is great yeah. right at the beginning, what? always. Yeah. You know, my, one of my best friends is my partner also, right? I think legalities is important. Did you do that? I think it's especially important when you're friends because there's a lot of things you can't talk about or you feel uncomfortable when it's not a stranger. So if, when it comes to friendships, I think you have to be extra clear on what the, what the, or laying down the ground rules. It's critical it, it, to it, keep the friendship. Did you agree you know. with that, right, David? Yeah, I mean, so for us, it was in the beginning like a piece of paper written down, not by a lawyer, like sign here. The reality is it was just lucky that we we're all best friends. I, going forward, I'll tell anyone, even with their best friend, because there comes a period of time, a year, year and a half, where you have to go. For us, I mean, the one thing is everyone has 100% trust, and we're totally I, honest. I, but I, that, I but, understand that. But that, but that, but that said, uh, the reality is that as companies grow, you never want to leave that uh, chance. So our suggestion, now we have great lawyers, and that now as we've grown, I would tell anyone, no matter what, from day one, no matter who you're working from, that $200 to make that contract legit is probably the best $200 you could spend. A professional's expensive, and amateur's a fortune. Yep. Always hire a good yeah, professional lawyer, right? Now, the other reason why I say this is, too, sometimes, it may be in, and I'm happy it's not in your situation, but friends sometimes overcompensate for another friend saying, oh, I know you're having a hard time. I'll help you during this time. And all of a sudden, that other friend says, you know what? You're kind of good at this. I'll kind of take the back seat, and you'll forgive them because they're a friend. And this is where legalities are important. Everyone needs to know their roles and responsibilities and how to always step up to the plate. You guys aren't like that, but I'm saying other people out there, 
that's why it's important to have those the legal sp positions inside there. Absolutely, and I think uh, if you, I mean, there's, I think there's a difference between someone just being a friend of yours or an acquaintance, and someone like David and Greg to me are like my brother. I, so I, I know I that ins and outs. Like I, I know that they're the hardest working guys out there. I mean, they bust their butts. So I admire uh, you guys. Yeah. I really do. Your business sounds impressive. Did you go off and raise some money? Yeah, we uh, closed our Series A. So this is our second round of funding in October. How much so, did you close so far? What's TechCrunch say? Our uh, crunch base? Almost eight million. Eight million. Our last round was five point five. All institutional. All institutional. Yeah. And you see this as a business that becomes what? Because it's not just about floral uh, as in flowers. You actually help out florists, meaning you become infrastructure design partners yeah, for them, yeah. right? I mean, it's, a, it's a very... So right now we're focused on the florists in the U.S. We've had florists from about 15 other countries reach out to us. I think the most interesting thing is sometimes as we're looking at the marketplace, we see people post things that are not flowers because the platform suits what they're doing. And so it's just to give us ideas. So... I do think scalable across uh, class industries and to other countries, but right now I think what we want to do is, as you said, do one thing and do it perfect. Which you right have now, to. Right now we want to focus on this and then, and then see where we can scale. I'm thinking in my mind, obviously anything that's like from chocolates to all those things yeah. would be part of your platform. What would be on the peripheral that would be interesting that you could integrate as time goes on? I think, well, right now we're extremely laser focused on flowers. I'm it's saying a big later market. on. That's yeah. what I'm saying as later we, on. As we grow, I think the natural progression would be to gifting, like local gifting in I general. I can see that. So, right? yeah. So, an extension could be, you know, uh, cupcake places or cookie shops or bakeries, stuff like that, where people would still want that local service, local delivery, but it's in a gifting form. So, we're all sitting around, we're, we're, we're having a few drinks. Got a couple cigars because I'm assuming love you got to do cigars. What are we drinking? Uh, uh, double whiskey or whiskey? No, probably scotch, right? Okay. We're going to do some Perfect. scotch, even though I hate all that. But uh, we're doing all this and we're just pontificating on who would be the best company to acquire uh, as time goes on. Who would be a great partner? Would it be an Amazon? I think uh, any company that focuses on local would be a good. Isn't uh, everybody acquirer. doing that? Yeah, it's, Every it's a it's a theme that's becoming more and more popular. And yeah, even I look Amazon at the, is focused on that. I look at the flag too. companies. You know what the flag companies are? Yeah. You know what they are? Facebook, LinkedIn, Amazon, Google, right? Right. Do you sell to a flag company? And I think out of all those, Amazon's very interesting because they want that direct relationship to know so everything. It does make sense, right? Because Amazon, for, for if I was saying about who are our potential, as you said, uh, vendors. Anytime you see a delivery truck driving by, whether it's bakeries, even dry cleaning, mm -hmm. you see a local aspect that's not being cured by the, uh, the big companies you said because their footprint is in shipping, mm -hmm. right? They don't have a lot of the tools or the sense like with different zip codes or different cutoff times, they need this, they need that. So we're customizing the florists because they have needs that haven't been cured. And <laughs> I think, I think, I mean, it's all hypothesizing, but a company like Amazon or other ones, they do have a history of acquiring companies that they don't. I love what you guys are doing, yeah. especially that you really take the floors to a whole new level, not just getting their inventory out and create relationships, but helping them create their platform. Good job. People want to find out more. Where do they go? Bloomnation.com. Bloomnation.com. Guys, thanks a lot. I, I have a feeling this is one of many businesses you're going to create together. Thank I you. I can tell right away. Yeah.